What's going on, guys? We got a special show today. It is the E League preview slash predictions for this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I believe every single day starts at two, two p.m. Eastern, and uh, we'll go over the format, the teams, how the teams are going to do, and all that. So let's just get right into it. First off, so. The way it works for this tournament, there's two groups. There's group A and there's group B. Now, the way these groups were decided was seeds 1, 4, 5, and 8 would be in one group. That's group A. Group B would be 2, 3, 6, and 7. Now, there's a couple qualms, obviously, because uh, this is from the RLCS World Championships. As you can see, the top eight teams are in there right above me. Uh, that means Chiefs are in. Energy is out. Um, so, first, a couple qualms. Um... Uh, like, uh, this was, uh, like an invitational, so it makes sense. Like, they can invite whoever they want. I feel like going off just the World Championships might be a little bit weird, but, uh, I really do enjoy that Chiefs are here. I'm not saying Chiefs shouldn't have made it. I'm just saying, like, who knows if energy was better than Mocket. They were both three seeds. It's just that because Europe won the last World Championships, Mocket gets the easier game in Pale Horse, while energy got the tough game of Chiefs in the lower bracket. Could have been different, but oh well. That's what happens. You have to play. You have to win to get into these invite-only tournaments. Now, let's go over the seeding of this. Obviously, it's very easy to tell the top four seeds, one through four. That's Gale Force, Method, Cloud9, and then finally G2. Uh, th uh, where it gets weird is how do you determine the fifth seed and the sixth seed and the seventh and eighth seed because obviously they tied. Uh, so the fifth seed was Ghost or PSG. They gave it to Ghost, and honestly, I would have preferred putting Ghost over on the other side because I'm not a big fan of Group B being three European teams. One, we see these teams play way more often than we do the uh, their uh, international opponents, so I would have preferred to at least not have three European teams in the same one, and that's probably what I would have uh, determined it by, is just put Ghost as the sixth seed just because... I want more diversity in the groups per region. Uh, instead, in Group B, we have three European teams. Uh, but what they probably did was Ghost Game, and they lost 3-2 to two to Cloud9 uh, when they finished in their fifth place. And then PSG lost 3-1 to one to G2, so they finished in sixth. I guess that's why they did it. But PSG also beat Cloud9. You have that argument. A Ghost beat a Mocket, but Mocket, you know, they came in seventh. So, in my mind, I feel like PSG, if you're going to go off tiebreakers, I would have put them fifth. Just because of their strength of schedule, maybe throughout this tournament, they lost to the number two team and the number three team. Ghost Game and lost to, oh, well, actually, Ghost Game and lost to the same amount of people, too. They lost to the number one seed and they lost to the number three seed. But PSG at least beat the number three seed, while Ghost Game and they only beat a seventh seed. Like, it can go anyway. I just would have done it for diversity's sake, put them maybe in Group B. Uh, then the next groups is 7th and 8th place, and I think they did the same exact thing here. Chiefs got the 8th seed because they lost to Cloud9 3-1, to one, while Maki got the 7th seed because they lost to G2 3-2. to two. So I believe that's why I probably would have flipped those as well. I probably would have put Chiefs at number 7, Maki at number 8, because Maki beat Pale Horse, who didn't win a single game, while Chiefs beat NRG who took Method to 5 and all that stuff. But again, whatever. It doesn't really matter all that much. And again, Chiefs played Cloud9, the tougher opponent, while Mocket played a weaker opponent, weaker, uh, versus G2. Uh, but either way, these are our groups. And the way this works is they will play one best of five versus each of these teams. Top two from each side of the group, or each group, will move on to the, internet, uh, to the bracket. So at least... For the sake of diversity in the bracket, we can't get four European teams alone in the bracket, which is nice, I guess. I'm, I don't know. But uh, because there's three on one side, so one has to be eliminated. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's do some predictions here. So we'll start off in Group A. Of course, like these are best of fives. Best of seven into the bracket. So the number one seed from Group A would play the number two seed from Group B. Vice versa. And that's how they will settle that. There's no third place game. So Sunday is actually a pretty short day. Uh, basically, it's a three-day event. A three-day event. It's six games on Friday, I would assume. Six games on Saturday. Unless they do eight games on Saturday because they want, you know, it's a it's a better day. And maybe only do four on, on Friday. So maybe it's uh, just these four games that we see here in this picture right above me. Uh, we'll see. It could either be four and eight or six and six. Who knows? 
And that'll conclude the group stage. We'll move on to bracket, just best of sevens, only three games, two semifinals, and a final. So that's how it'll be done. Lots of money on the line, too. I can't remember the exact numbers. I think it's 150K. So 70,000 for first, 30,000 for second. Third and, fo- uh, third and fourth both get 12,000. Third and group gets 4,000. So that's a big, big jump. Uh, and then fourth, uh, yeah, uh, fourth and group gets 3,000. So that's very similar. Uh, but that third and fourth, like if. You, so if you get a two seed versus a three seed uh, out of groups, that's eight thousand dollar difference. While third and fourth only one thousand dollar difference. Then also if you get a win, you get a thousand dollars. So there's twelve games of those. So the rich get richer, which is kind of weird, but they because you know like you want to win to get, get placed higher anyway for money. So I don't know, but I guess it makes for a good story of like oh they just won a thousand dollars because they got the win. So I guess that works. Um, I don't think it's really necessary, but hey whatever it's all good uh so there you go that's the prize splits so these teams like for just showing up getting a thousand dollars each free uh each of these players so that's pretty cool and of course you know the, the free trip out there and all that stuff uh so let's get into predictions uh predictions are gonna be weird because we don't know the exact schedule i'll probably start with one team and work my way down um so let's start with gale force the number one seed coming in their first game is against chiefs and then we don't know exactly the order of their games. Maybe they'll decide it based on who wins and loses to try and keep it interesting going into the final game of groups. Uh, but that's still a lot of guesswork. So who knows? Um, so Gale Force versus Chiefs. I think Gale Force will take this pretty handily. Uh, Gale Force is just one of those really strong teams. Um, like three of the best players. Like if you had to say like, who's the best player in the world right now, all three players from Gale Force are definitely in that conversation. And, um, it just depends who shows up on the day. We saw day one, it was more Violent Panda. Saw so, uh, day two, um, well, day two and three, it was basically Turbo and KDOP just splitting duties. Like, one's going off in one series, one's going off in another. So this team is extremely, extremely talented. The Chiefs, they have to figure out Torsos. Torsos has looked extremely poor on the live environment stage uh, for the World Championship. He looked extremely nervous throughout most of their games and honestly he's got to figure that out because he's supposed to be their best player yet jake and drippe had to pick up the pieces and they played exceptionally well like jake's vision on his passes were phenomenal throughout the entire uh world championship and drippe obviously he was scoring goals left right and center so uh, that's a good sign because if torsos can start playing i think they can uh take some wins here in this group and possibly move out of here and they also get to face two north america teams where Historically, they're pretty decent against North America, so uh, keep that in mind. But uh, like I think Gale Force is too strong, and an OC team has never beaten a European team, and I believe that will continue here. And Gale Force will go up 1-0 there. Chiefs will fall down to 0-1. Secondly, we have G2. So we'll do Gale Force versus G2 next. They played at the World Championships, and honestly, it just looked like Gale Force kind of outclassed them. That was also before G2 started getting really hot, I felt like. On day one, they weren't as strong uh, compared to their day two. Uh, but, or day three, it's all, like it all blends together. Who knows? Day two and three. Sure, why not? Um, I think it's going to be a similar game where Gale Force is just going to be too fast, too strong, and they're going to put too much pressure on G2. G2 doesn't play exceptionally well under pressure. I feel like that's when Rizzo kind of goes back to that third role, and that's the G2 I hate to watch because I feel like it just ruins what uh, uh, what Rizzo can possibly do. It's also, I think, his weakest role, so I think this really hurts uh, G2 and Gale Force. That pressure, like if they can keep up the pressure, this should be a pretty easy, uh, easy series for them. But again, don't count out G2. We were saying it before the World Championship. I was saying this like, Everyone basically was like, eh, there's seven teams that, that can probably win this world championship, and that excluded Chiefs and G2. Because uh, like, a lot of people haven't seen Mocket on the uh, international stage. They're like, maybe. Most people probably would argue there were six teams. Like, maybe rule out Mocket as well. But G2, when they know how to grind, and they know how to fix issues, it seems, right before a live environment, and they get hyped by those crowds. Now, E-League, obviously, I think it's a, a much smaller crowd, obviously. Uh, so maybe that crowd momentum won't come into play as much and i think g2 really does uh, feed off that they were kind of fan favorites even take three with rizzo was kind of a fan favorite in europe uh so that might hurt them a little bit because they can't ride that momentum but i think gale force kind of wins this one kind of easily uh this group i think for gale force is 
exceptionally easy for them. Uh, like, I don't think it should be a problem. And then Gale Force, they also played Ghost, and they just dismantled Ghost. Get, uh, Ghost beat them at Gnarly a couple weeks before the World Championship. A lot of people are saying Gnarly results were not maybe uh, what we're going to see going forward because there was, like, zero practice time. There was a lot of production issues, and... Um, European teams flew in the night before. Like, I think the only team that we could give some credit to was probably PSG. Like, they made a really good run like, under all those circumstances. And I think that carried over to the World Championship to an extent. Like, them beating Cloud9. Uh, but I think Ghost, again, like, I think Gale Force is just too strong. In all three positions, they are going to win most uh, contests or get the correct touches. And it's just... Be like, all it's going to be is a pressure game. The one thing I love to see from Gale Force is they used to be a shooting team where they would just shoot a ton. Um, I actually want to check some stats here real quick if I can. I'm going to go over to teams and see some shooting percentage stats. So they were seventh in the league um, during the European league play. So they were, you know, outside of the playoff picture because all they did was just take shots. wasn't really a high percentage shot game. And... Um, that was very different compared to like a team like method where method they took a very few shots they were actually down like fourth or fifth i think it was but they had a high shooting percentage so they uh converted those goals during the world championship they shot 24.69 uh that is gale force finished in fifth which is much better than what they were finishing uh prior to that and everyone kind of shot a lot lower uh percentage wise compared to the league play season probably you know pressure and all that stuff but one thing I like to see from them that they started getting their passing game more in tune and all that stuff, and uh, that's really going to help for for the pressure uh, situations where like don't try and just solo carry it out, just get the pass out, make it ex um, extremely easy to get the clear, and then hold your pressure game because they're some of the best midfield defenders in the game between K Dop Turbo, Violent Panda probably doesn't do it as often, but those two can do it all day, and Violent Panda can uh, if he wants to. It's just like he doesn't really need to, so. I'm going to give Gale Force an easy 3-0. I think this is going to be a very easy bracket for them. I think it helps that they're playing Chiefs first. I think Chiefs don't really know how to play against European teams, it seems like, yet. Yeah, they usually kind of struggle. Who knows, though? Chiefs have surprised us before. It's the first game, and I think that's where the nerves come in. And I think Gale Force, with all their experience, like, first games are always tough with every team, no matter the experience you have. But Gale Force, so much land experience. Same with Chiefs as well, but Torsos has really struggled under that pressure, so I think they'll get that win there. Like, if maybe Gale Force was playing a G2 first, maybe, like, you could see an upset. But I don't see it here. I see Gale Force coming out with the 3-0 out of the group, and they will become the number one seed. And now I lost my... There it is. Okay. Next up, we'll do G2. Uh, G2 versus Chiefs should be very interesting. And Ghost, honestly. like I think these three teams, it's very possible we could see a three-way tie at one and two. Very, very possible here. I think Chiefs is going to win a game. Possibly two. I just don't know against two. Like, I feel like Chiefs are one of those teams, like I was saying on the World Championship desk, like, if... um, It's not a matter of if they're going to win. It's just a matter of when they're going to win. Like, one of those major upsets, because they scrim really well. Ghost Gaming, they still have not impressed me. I know, like, you're not supposed to doubt them or, like, or like stop doubting us, but they beat a market squad in five games. It was, it was a kind of weak series... For, uh, from both teams, I thought. And um, then they re really didn't do much after that. Uh, they kind of uh, got swept by Gale Force. And then they did take Cloud 9 to 5. So I'll give them that. But um, I don't know. I just, I still, I'm not a huge believer of them. Uh, this Chiefs, oh man. Well, let's go to G2 first. Let's start with G2. Lately, G2 has had Ghost Number. Uh, they've won the past two occurrences, maybe three. Um, and I think G2 starting to hit their stride. I think they're figuring some stuff out. And uh, it's much better than their playoff run during the World Championships or during the Regional Championships. Uh, I think G2 beats Ghost. Uh, yeah. This will be a close series. I think this series will determine a lot. I would say, like, between these three teams, like, if they all lose the Gale Force, again, possibly three-way ties. Uh, the way tiebreakers work, by the way, is head-to-head -head is first. Let me find the tiebreakers right here. So it's head-to-head -head is first. Um, then it's map difference only counted matches between tied teams. 
So if there's a three-way tie and one and two, that means they all beat each other, so that doesn't matter. Then it comes down to how many maps did you take. So if G2 loses in five but then sweeps the other team, they would probably be the ones uh, moving on and so forth. Uh, then it goes to goal difference. So you got to keep that in mind just in case that happens. It's a, kind of unlikely, but uh, goal difference is next. And then it's finally map difference across all games. So that would include Gale Force. So if for some reason everyone's still tied, very unlikely. Um, it'll then include Gale Force, but uh, that's very unlikely. And then so on and so forth. So I'm going to give G2 the win there. Uh, G2 versus Chiefs. Ah, oh, this one's tough. Hmm. I'm going to give it to G2. Like, I'm starting to believe more in G2. They seem to be figuring some stuff out. Last time they played the Chiefs, it was a very close series. But the one thing was G2, the demolition game was absolutely insane. Like, the Chiefs cannot let that happen again. If that happens again, it's going to be over probably, like, in a quicker series. It was also uh, the first series for both teams. So, usually, it's, like, a little bit of, like, we don't know exactly what would have happened if they would have played under, like, more of, like, oh, round two, round three. It could be a lot different, but I think G2 will win this. I'm uh, uh, getting more faith in Rizzo. I'm getting more faith in Kronovi. It seems like his rotations are getting better. And even j -Nabs, he usually like ball hogs, but he's kind of like sitting back a little more, letting Rizzo make those plays. I want to see Rizzo make the plays as the number one role. Hand it off to j -Nabs and Kronovi. I just don't want him in that third role. I feel like his back wall defense is really poor compared to both j -Nabs and Crow. I'd much rather see them up there. Uh, and, and Rizzo's very good on the offensive side, being like a very like creative player to create stuff for uh, uh, Jane Epps and Crow. So I expect to see more of that. It seems like they were figuring that out. They obviously got fourth at world championships, made a good run. Um, and G2 under pressure seems to do pretty well, at least in a live setting. So I'm going to give G2 th the benefit of the doubt here. And then finally chiefs versus ghost. I think chiefs is uh, going to take a win here. I really do. Um, this could be the last game. I'm not really sure. It depends on how they do the brackets, but it's possible. Uh, but I think Chiefs will pull out a win here. Again, this is all part of the trend to just give Ghost uh, an 3 so then they can go on and, and come in second in the group. So I'm helping you out, Lethemir, Zane, Jackie, and Classics. But uh, Chiefs is one of those, like, I think they're going to win one of these games. It might be the other way. They might beat G2. They might beat both. I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it'll be very close between these three teams, but I do think G2 will squeak it out. I think Chiefs can beat Ghost. Um... At the same time, it could very easily be Ghost beating both these teams as well. So this is going to be a very uh, contentious group for the number two seed. I feel like number one seed's a lock. I have Gale Force in there. That'll do it for that bracket. Let's go over to group B. So group B. This one's a little bit tougher. Mocket, they looked really, really bad at the World Championships. Like, it was only Fairy Peak doing anything whatsoever. They looked terrible. But they got to play Pale Horse, so they got a 7th place finish. Because Pale Horse, honestly, just... They seemed outclassed there. They played kind of well in scrims, versus Mocket at least. But for the most part, everyone else was saying Pale Horse was kind of the weak team there, from what I heard. And uh, and Mocket seemed like they figured out how to play a little bit later in their scrims, or at least a couple hours before their matches. So that works out, I guess. But Mocket did not look good. They did not look good at all. Um, and honestly, like... It, so it comes down to, for Mocket... Like, you can't expect Fairy Peak to carry that hard again, but you also can't expect pa uh, Pashi and Freaky to be that quiet again. It's going to be somewhere in the middle, probably for both. Um, I think they could sh could kind of struggle here. Like, I think it's very possible. Versus Method, I think Method... One thing I loved about Method was, like, it didn't even seem like they cared about coming in second. It helped that they got swept, but they were having fun there. They were really excited to be playing like some of their friends as well. Uh, but Method seems to have the good mindset now. It seems for a live environment. They got over that hump of like not performing well as a team of three in a live environment. I think that Method and Energy series was like Method should be counting their blessings for that series because Energy I felt like played better than them on day one. Those nerves seem to. To catch Method and Energy uh, off guard a bit too, because uh, Energy was just missing shots that they should have easily scored. Like Energy was playing the field game, like ninety percent of the game they were playing better, but then the ten percent where you actually have to score goals, Energy just failed to do so. So Method, I think, squeaked out a win there, and this could have been completely different. Method could have been down in the lowers, Energy uh, could have been making a run, uh, but Method looked really good. 
versus Cloud9 as well. They battled back after losing a tough seven-game series versus Gale Force. And I think Method, with all that World Championship experience, like, I don't think E-League is going to bother them that much. I don't think it should be a problem. I'm going to give a 1-0 to Method there uh, over Mocket at least. Now, the Method Cloud9 game, I think this one can be very interesting. I think this game very likely determines one or two but whoever loses it has to really watch out for psg because i think psg is also right there i feel like this group is kind of lopsided on the other side where i'm not a huge believer of mock it but the other three any of those three can move on uh and could win the group um method versus cloud nine should be really really good i think it comes down to gimmick like gimmick in live environments has shown usually he's been playing a little bit poor in my opinion, compared to what we've seen in league plays and stuff like that. Like we see stats from previous lands where like it's squishy scoring most of the goals and gimmick and most assists at the world championship. A uh, gimmick did put in a lot of goals, but we saw some clear defensive mistakes. Like if you guys saw my video about the uh, game five loss to method, most of that was on gimmick in my mind. And I feel like he still has a little bit of those nerves coming out. I think every single live environment will help him get better and better and better. Squishy's been a monster. Torment was relatively quiet as well uh, during the World Championships, but he's like, he's not supposed to be the one trying to stand out, so it's not a huge deal. Um, this one's tough. I think Cloud9 has the chance to do it. You know, like, I think this might be a redemption time for Cloud9. I think they'll get the win over Method. I think it'll be extremely close, but Cloud9 can definitely do it. So I'm going to give it to Cloud9 there. I think uh, mistakes just cost them. They were right there um, versus Method. But Method, obviously, extremely good team too. Method versus PSG. PSG, if they can win their first game versus Cloud9, I, I think that determines a lot. It seems like when PSG loses, they really get down on themselves. And then they uh, don't play as well uh, going through in uh, other tournaments and stuff. So... That PSG Cloud9 game, oh, let's do that game first, since that one's going to be first on the docket. I think Cloud9 takes this game as well. Um, I think Cloud9, last time they were at a hu huge disadvantage being the number one seed. I'm not really a big fan of having the four seeds or, uh, or the OC seeds playing twice on the day while the number one seeds have to sit there and wait for the match. Not a huge fan of that, and I thought that hurt Cloud9 a lot. They looked pretty nervous the first two games and then battled back and got into the series and i think cloud nine at this point um if they're playing first against each other i think cloud nine can take this i think they've kind of learned from that world championship but uh th that was one thing with the world championship i wasn't a huge fan of like i think you know, that really hurts in number one seeds sure they get a guaranteed seventh but it really hurts to play the team that has already played on that day that it kind of sucks but i guess you have to do it some way or another so uh but i think cloud nine can win this um and uh, go up 2-0 in their thing and then psg beat 0-1 and i think since psg goes 0-1 i think that also means method beats psg because so i think psg will kind of be getting down on themselves and not feeling very confident and i think that'll hurt them a lot and method will take that win as well psg did beat them during league play but i think method overall is the better team but psg continues to surprise me i always feel like uh Ferrer is one of those players where i feel like at times, like, he seems very quiet, but he's just a closer. He will, like, when he's got a shot attempt, he will score those goals. And uh, you really have to watch out for him because, like, he's that quiet member of that team. I feel like a lot of people talk about Bluey and Chaucet. Ch Ch uh, Chaucet didn't have the greatest world championship, but he's usually that third role. And honestly, like, mistakes there get, uh, they're kind of under, like, a magnifying glass of, when you make a mistake as third, it turns into a goal. When you uh, make a a mistake on the offensive side then the game's still tied or you just don't score a goal so it's not a huge deal um and trust me i felt that pain when i used to play uh but i think psg because of that they will go o2 um i just think their confidence will be a little bit shaken but if they beat cloud nine they're probably in like i don't think they will miss out it could be a three-way tie once again but this is what i'm going with all right only games left, we have Mocket versus Cloud9 and PSG. I think Cloud9 gets the 3-0 here. I think Mocket, they've looked kind of slow at times, and if they allow pressure to, to come at them instead of going on their offensive tear that, that they do, um, 
then they're going to be in trouble. And last time, it just seemed like Fairy Peak was the only one doing anything on the offensive side. So I expect Cloud9 to shut that down. Torment should be able to shut down Fairy Peak to an extent. And then Squishing Gimmick can do their duo up top and do whatever they want. And then finally, Maki versus PSG for the third, fourth place match. Um, I think PSG will win it. Uh, I just, I'm like this one. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to go Maki here because I think it depends when they play. But I think PSG, again, with their confidence issues, like after a loss, I think this could hurt them. And I think PSG could fall 0-3 in this group. Again, PSG could very easily just go 3-0 in this group. I think it really comes down to that Cloud9 matchup in, on the first day to see where they go from there. So, here we go. Now we got our bracket. Let's make the bracket. Oops, I went to the wrong one. All right, so we got GFE versus... Who is it? Method. So rematch of the World Championship Final. And then Cloud9 versus G2. So I didn't mean to do it this way, so European and North America. But this means we would get a European North America Final, which is what everyone always wants. At least that's what I always want. So let's go into it. It's a best of seven. Gale Force versus Method. I think Gale Force is the better team here. Uh, it seemed like they fixed some issues during the first set versus Method. Again, it's going to be extremely close. Uh, but then the sweep, obviously, in, in the finals. A lot of people say Method was tired. I don't really think that's a huge issue because they have, like, 20-minute break, if not more, before they play again. Hell, they were throwing shirts out to the crowd before the final. I think they were fine and ready to play. Um, I think Gale Force is the better team here, and I think they will get the win. We'll go 4-2. Um, and then Cloud9 versus G2, I do believe, like, of course, like, these teams also played at the world championship and cloud nine barely beat you two three to two but again i think every time there's a live a land cloud nine is going to get better and better and better even uh, even though they've won the first two i still think well all right so maybe not better but like better and better and better but they won their first two they lost this one but they came in third. I think Cloud9 will get better in this tournament, I should say, compared to the World Championship. I think it's less of a crowd, less of an issue. It's going to be harder for G2 to ride that momentum. I'm going to also go... I'm going to go 4-1. Like, I think Cloud9 is the better team than G2. They just played in the Cyber Power tournament. I think it was like two weeks ago at this point. And Cloud9 beat them 3-1 and then 3-0 in the finals. So they seem to have G2's number. And I expect... Like, again, it's going to be very hard to stop that, that squishy gimmick... Uh, uh, combo in the front it just comes down to uh is gimmick playing like his normal self or is he getting a little nervous at this point i think he'll be playing a little bit more like his normal self and then finally we have gfe versus cloud nine in the final i hate that cloud nine doesn't have a space in it uh, it kills me it kills me Whew, this one's tough this one's tough you know what no oh, wrong way sorry <laughs> that's what i meant i think cloud nine will take this um i don't think it's a matter of which team is better i think both teams are ex extremely strong i think it's just like who plays better on that day and gale force won the last one so that means cloud nine wins this one it's as simple as that <laughs> we're just gonna go na versus eu we're gonna go back and forth with all these lands and i think cloud nine can come out the victors i did predict gale force to win the world championships but i think cloud nine can pull it out here i think they can i think um they will take this i think it really comes down to that group if they uh, well like if they can just get out of group b like i think that's uh such good practice compared to what gale force is getting uh of course gale force playing method like that could go some other way too um hmm, you know what I'm gonna switch some stuff. I'm pulling I'm pulling some crazy stuff. You know what? I think that method will be in the final. Do it. We're gonna switch it. We're switching everything. I think alright, so because of the practice method we'll be getting in their group, I think they can beat Gale Force. I think it's very possible. Like uh to me right now there's three teams that are above everyone else. And it's Cloud9, Gale Force, and Method. And I think on any given day. Any of these teams can beat each other. It really just depends on the day. Um, there's obviously like other teams. Like when we go down to the next season of RLCS, I think there's other teams like in Europe that could really uh, like stand a chance. I think uh, there's also like energy on, on the North America side. May they rest in peace. 
uh, that can also compete once in a while, like one of those punch and chances. I think G2 is kind of in that same category lately. Uh, but I think Method will win it uh, simply because of the harder group. I just think that'll give him a little bit more practice, a little bit more competition, and Gale Force might be coasting a little bit in their group. So I'm going to give it to Method. And then Cloud9 versus G2. I still think Cloud9 is a better team. So we'll get two teams from Group B. They will play once again. And I think Cloud9 will again beat Method in the final. Four to three. Because we want Game 7 in the finals. Why not? And uh, that'll do it, guys, for this E-League preview. Go watch Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. I won't be there, which I'm very, very sad about. But it's still going to be a great time. I'm excited to see my boys cast it. And you guys should be too. And see all these players play some amazing Rocket League. And this probably will be the last like major event before the new year. So enjoy it. Enjoy the holidays after. Enjoy the little break. And then probably, who knows, there will probably be things popping up in January, February, you know, whatever. And then we start a whole new season again. It's going to be a lot of fun. But these are my final predictions. And I'll probably get them wrong. But hey, that's kind of the fun of it, right? Just to predict for the fun of it. But that'll do it for me. And that'll do it for me. I don't know. I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. And we'll see you next time. Later.